Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 21 of the Hardscape Growth Show. I'm your host, Alex from Tackle Block, and today I figured I'd uh, take a look back at uh, our first 20 episodes and uh, pick out a couple little moments that stood out to me on the topic of leadership and uh, the way that leadership can help shape a company. Not just shape a company in terms of performance or in terms of results, but also in terms of the culture that it can create. And uh, one of the things that I've learned over my career uh, in, well, in the industry, but really uh, at any business, is the, the company culture can play a tremendous role, not only in uh, keeping people around long term and helping them grow into the uh, type of people that really take your company to the next level, but it also helps tremendously in attracting the right type of talent. Two episodes that uh, stood out for me the most out of the first 20 that we've done uh, are the one with, uh, with uh, Jordan Daniker from Evolve Design Build and uh, the other one with Matt Heiner from uh, Heiner Outdoors. Uh, both of these guys seem to have figured out over the course of building their businesses to where they are today uh, the importance of leadership. And um, what I really appreciate about both of them is – it's not leadership in the uh, in the really uh, corporate or, or by the book or what they teach you in school or, or anything like that. They figured it out kind of organically. And once they realized the importance that it represented to their business, then they started looking into it. Then they started researching a bit more. And I think that that's, um, that's really key. And that's one of the reasons why we started this podcast is to be able to plant those little seeds of inspiration for you so that you can take the next step and you can reach out to some of these leaders in the industry or you can reach out to um, different uh, organizations, different associations, different Facebook groups and just kind of start picking people's brains and, and realizing how much bigger this whole thing can be. Um, so the first moment that I wanted to highlight was with Jordan and uh, it's about six and a half minutes into that episode. Uh, we're going to take a second here and listen to uh, a quick excerpt from it. And we're going to break down what stood out to me and how this matters so much uh, for your respective businesses, or, or at least what, what I took away from it and what I hope to, uh, to take away and apply within my own role and within my own team at my own company uh, here at Tackle Block. So uh, let's take a listen. That's it. And that's exactly why you're on the show today, because of that, that focus on building a, a team and building culture. Yeah. At what point did, uh, did a company culture become a priority for you? I think that, I think I, culture is like one of these words where it it's takes a, a while. Word that doesn't mean much, right? I, I think it's hard to understand it at first. I think yeah. especially there's so many other fish to fry when you start in a business, you're like, culture's like over your head. You don't even, mm -hmm. you're like, okay, what is culture? Right. And like, it's funny. I, I think it was actually you and I might be wrong, but I'm going to give you some credit. There was a book that you I saw on your story and this was like two years ago. It might have been longer than that. We saw each other at Showcase or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was Start With Why, I think was the name. Yeah. Simon, Simon Sinek. Yeah. Are you Simon Sinek, right? So are you yeah. like a big advocate of that? So I, I'm a huge advocate of him after reading all the books. Yeah. But it was Start With Why. Yeah. And well, I, yeah. I read the book and I remember sharing it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So maybe that's yeah. what it was. And, and let me just backtrack for a lot of these new guys. So like you start this business and you're like, mm -hmm. there's so much to deal with. You're trying to get your daily logs. You're trying to get your equipment. You're trying to get outdoor. The last thing you're worried about is culture. Like you're just not okay. It's, mm -hmm. it's survival. Really? It is. Yeah. It's survival, yeah. right? there's, a, there's another big C word that takes over, which is cash. Yeah. Cash <laughs> flow there. I mean, you, you name it. Culture is the last thing. And I think that yeah. initially I, I'm a people person and I, and like, I want to like, it's, I don't want to sound like weird, but I want to put my hands on other people and be like, this, I want you to evolve. I want, I want to, I want you to be great. Yeah. I want you to, I want to like put my energy on you and stuff like that. And so like, for me, what I would start to do is I would send these guys to train and I would try to make them better. But it was like, it was our culture, but I didn't realize it. Like I was like, okay, you're going to take this class because I want you to be better. And I want us to be the best. And I was slowly developing that mindset of, wait a minute. I went to work for this guy. He's not like every other contractor because he actually cares. He mm -hmm. wants me to do well. He's advocating for me. He's not just 
oh, you come in, it's nine to five, right? Like, and I, and I was doing that, but I didn't realize what I was doing. And then I read the book of why, and I'm like, whoa. I mean, like it was just a, a bomb drop for me. Cause I'm like, this makes so much sense. And like, from that moment, my sole purpose was to discover why I was doing something, why I was building this culture. And like the culture fell together. Like I try to, people are like, how do you get that? Even to this day, I'm in this group, the masterminds group, right? Mm -hmm. And like, we talk about yeah, culture. Too. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's right. And you've got a lot going on. So there's, you know, there's, you talk to some guys, there's, there's actually getting to be a pretty good group now, man. And we've been doing these zoom conferences, but one of the younger guys, and not that I'm old by no means, I'm only 34, but the, the thing is, they had asked, man, how do you guys develop these cultures? And I'm like, I can't tell you how to do it. It's you, but in a roundabout way. Expand it out. Yeah, exactly. It, you have to take like what you do instinctually and start to make it intentional. Yeah, basically. right. Exactly. You have to yeah. give them some of your chi, essentially. Like yeah. you literally, that's what you're doing. You're like, and are there other players on your team that are able to do that? Absolutely. But they don't bring the same chi to the table. Like you can't. You got to realize just because they're strong at something doesn't mean that, you know, they're going to be the same as you or you're going to be the same as them. Like you literally mm -hmm. when you start getting players like that on your team, your chi gets better. Your, your your culture gets better because they're like, whoa, we can feed off of all these guys. Right. So, like, I started developing that culture by, you know, giving them my chi. And then, like, I know it sounds crazy, but like branding and like gear was huge for me in culture. And, and, and because who doesn't want to feel good about themselves? Like you walk out the door. I don't care if you're going to Sunday church or you're going to a wedding. You want to put on your best pair of slacks, your dancing shoes and boogie. You know what I mean? Like that's literally, I want to come to work and look fly. Like, and, and as soon as you, you're only going to perform as good as you look, like, I believe that. Like if you go out instinctually and you're like, you don't feel good about yourself. Guess what? You're not going to do quality work. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. So like, I started investing in the gear, the the clothing, like the the whole identity, and 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 I think people easily get confused. You shouldn't come to work for that being your sole purpose. That shouldn't be your identity, right? But it should supplement who you are, and you, and work should encompass, you know, your lifestyle, like your life. What I'm getting at is like if you have a place that you come and you feel like you have purpose, you know, you shouldn't just solely rely on work but it's part of making your life whole versus going yeah. to a job you hate. I'm going to stop that there. And I think what st stood out to me was, you know, I, I started by asking him the question, you know, when did he start to prioritize company culture? When did that become actually important for him that he was making a, a conscious effort to focus on that, to help his business. And he couldn't like pinpoint an exact moment uh, or, or an exact understanding of culture until he mentioned that book, that Start With Why book uh, by Simon Sinek. I'd highly recommend that book simply because it really gets to the core of like, why are you doing what you're doing? And why should people care? And as soon as you can figure out what that is, why you're doing what you're doing, why you founded the business, what aspirations you have, why should people care, whether those be your clients or whether those be the members of your team? Once you figure that out, it becomes a lot easier to start to define the culture that you want for your company because you know why you're doing it. And you all of a sudden, you kind of have this, this guiding light, this North Star, or this true north on your compass. Like, this is where we should be going. Uh, there's a couple other things that he pointed out that, that really stood out to me. Um, you know, one was once he understood the importance of culture, he began to prioritize it. He started making it a focus for him as the leader of the company. He recognized that others contribute to the culture of the company, but he needs to define it. He needs to shape it uh, for his company to become the uh, representation or the, uh, the realization of the vision that he has and why he started it in the first place. Um, Another thing that stood out to me, which he didn't really say, but it's kind of implied because he said he wanted to build good relationships with everyone on the team. He wanted to be able to uh, help uh, train them and mold them and shape them into what he wanted the company to be. And to me, what that says is hiring for attitude. 
not necessarily hiring for aptitude. Um, and I think that that's something that strong leaders are capable of doing because they recognize that as a strong leader, there are certain things that people can learn. Uh, they can be taught, they can absorb that information, they can apply it easily and with the right structure, with the right processes, with the right checks and balances, and with the right overall guidance and supervision, you can teach anyone on your team almost anything that you know. But if they don't have the right attitude, if they don't have the right values as a human being, it's going to be tough for them to be a true natural fit and really reach the full potential that you might see in them. So that, that was pretty key. And then another thing, and this was funny, the, the whole thing started because uh, he has those, uh, those fun sunglasses and he gives them to his guys and everything. But he mentioned how once he started to understand the importance of culture, he started placing a greater emphasis on uniforms for the team. And when you think of uniforms, well, every great sports team has a great uniform. And there's that, that old cliche in sports, look good, play good. And that is exactly the mindset that he's bringing to his company, where he's looking at how people are, are set up, how are they dressed, you know, what's the shirts, what's the pants, what's the hats, what's the glasses, what's the safety gear, do they feel like pros? And if they feel like pros, they'll act like pros. And that's one of the key steps to creating that professional environment and that winning culture that he wants to put in. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, I talked about hiring for attitude uh, and not for aptitude and understanding the values of the people in front of you and understanding why uh, you're doing things and, and what the, your, your, really your, your reason for existing as a company is. Uh, and that's something that Matt Heiner from Heiner Outdoor really tapped into uh, in his episode. And that uh, comes up about halfway through the episode there around the 21 uh, minute mark or 21 and a half. And uh, that's where we get into the core values of his company. So similarly to Jordan, once he understood what makes Heiner Outdoor uh, the company that people should want to hire and should want to work for, uh, he started breaking that down into what are the key elements, what are the core values. And he's got 12. So let's check it out. And then we'll throw in some housekeeping stuff, you know, and just kind of making sure everything's yeah. going. But that's a higher level. Dot the stuff. I's, cross the T's. Exactly. Cool. You said uh, you also alluded at one point to one of your core values. What are the core values of Heiner Outdoor Living? We've got 12 of them. Um, oh, so, okay. Yeah. It, it's, so it's buckle yeah, up here. <laughs> it's buckle up. So, I, I, yeah, and, and I try to make it short and simple. So each one is intuitive. So it, it ranges from build positive win-win relationships to playing the long game, be proactive, respect yourself and others. Uh, take ownership better than yesterday. Uh, I could go through all these if you'd like. Yeah, but, let's keep uh, going. Let's keep yeah, going. So, it's all good uh, stuff. Good isn't enough. Excellence is essential. Uh, you know, I don't know if you've ever been on the job and you're like, oh, that's good enough. That's a, you know, no, no, that, no. That's, a, that's a red flag to just go, oh, pause. Well, now we need to make this better, you know. Yeah. So it's just a uh, lead by example. Do the right thing. Have passion and pride in your work. Stay humble. Uh, but most importantly, have fun. That's amazing. I guarantee that's going to get a lot of playbacks. <laughs> if you're going to rewind, <laughs> listen to yeah. it again, write it down. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's, when did you, uh, when did you decide that that was important? Which one? The values. Just the establishing values. values. It's been something I've kind of been working on, but I, I really got it dialed in last year. And then, and, and I've just been, using my core values to be the compass of everything that we do at this company now from training to you know discipline to hiring to making decisions mm. you know when when an employee will come to me and they'll ask me a question i'll just say you know well what are your options and then they'll name off xyz and i'll say all right which one do you think aligns with the core values the most that one all right, do that. So build positive win-win relationships. The best relationships you can have are ones that deliver value to you and that you can deliver value to them. Because those are relationships that last a lifetime. 
And when you can have those strong win-win relationships for a lifetime, your life gets a lot easier and you can tackle any challenge, any obstacle very easily because you have a network that you can depend on that is there for you and is equally getting value from helping you. It's a win-win. Um, playing the long game. This is something that, uh, you know, I've always, uh, I've always, uh, been told this, uh, growing up from my dad, just to focus on the long term, be patient, keep doing the right things and things fall into place. Um, the older I get, the more I realize how true that is when you have those good win-win relationships when you're doing the right things and when all these other values that he breaks down, when you, when you live by all these other values, playing the long game, things get easier and easier and easier. And everything that was a moment, a monumental challenge, uh, for you two years ago, three years ago, five years ago, just think back, even starting your business, things that were insurmountable today, they're everyday things. So, Keeping that, that vision on the long term, where do you want to be? And, and keeping that long term understanding and patience is so critical to uh, success in business uh, and in life, you could say, but especially in business. Um, you got to look at it from the long term perspective. Be proactive. You can't just wait for things to get fixed for you. Uh, and that applies to you and that applies to everyone on your team. If they see a problem, if they see an issue, they should be speaking up. They should be proposing solutions. They should be trying to fix things. That's what makes a strong team. And that's what makes people start to trust each other because they're seeing the value that they bring to one another. And again, that ties into the first one, which is that win-win relationships, not just with clients, not just with employees, but across different members of the team too. So you really start to weave the strong network uh, around you. Respect yourself and others. That's uh, pretty self-explanatory. And then the next two are actually two of the core values of Amazon. So when you look at businesses that are ridiculously successful, Amazon is uh, unquestionably one of those businesses. And there's another book that I'd recommend uh, for anyone who, who wants to read books, It's uh, which I also recommend doing. It's not that long. It's not even 200 pages. It's uh, the Amazon Management System. Uh, by Ram Sharan and Julia Yang. And basically it breaks down how Amazon uh, manages their business. And uh, they really talk about all their core values. And two, that Amazon has in common with Heiner Outdoor is uh, taking ownership. Amazon calls it extreme ownership, but that is where you as the person, every person in the company takes ownership over the things that they're responsible for. And they know that they must deliver because they take so much pride and so much ownership in it. It's as if that part of the company is their own company. And when you can get people who think like that, who feel like that, who take ownership like that, you can delegate more effectively and you can start to build with those people. So find people who have that in them and who demonstrate that when you talk to them. And then uh, better than yesterday is the way that Matt put it. And Amazon puts it uh, raising the bar, always trying to raise the bar, uh, making sure that your people consistently get better. And every time you hire new people, those are people that are elevating the talent level, the skill level of your team. You shouldn't be worried about hiring people who might be smarter than you or stronger than you with certain skill sets or maybe overall, because that's what makes your team stronger. And every team always wants to get better players. It's the same thing in business and you should see your business the same way. You want to win, you need all-stars. How do you get all-stars? You get some stars. And then when you have a team of stars, all of a sudden you start attracting some all-stars and some of your stars on your team start elevating their game to match the skill level, match the ownership, match the effort level of the superstars. And that's what builds a winning culture. And that's what you as the leader of your company need to be trying to do. So that's why leadership and culture are so intertwined. Uh, we'll keep going here down the rest of it. Um, the seventh one is good enough. Uh, good isn't enough. Excellence is essential. Good enough is not good enough. We actually have uh, that as one of the core values here at Techo Block. Good enough is not good enough. Excellence is critical. That is what separates the greats from everyone else. Uh, lead by example. Everyone on your team can lead by example, showing up on time, 
giving it their all, being respectful of others, taking ownership over their responsibilities, being proactive, uh, doing the right thing. These, these are all things that every single person can do. You don't need skills. You don't need training. You just need the right attitude. So that's why hiring for attitude is so important. Uh, do the right thing. Have passion and pride in your work. I think if you have an environment where all these other things matter, it is inevitable that people will have passion and take pride in their work. Uh, stay humble is critical. You can always learn. Every single person will make mistakes, big and small. So we have to all stay humble. We have to all realize that at any given moment, any single one of them, uh, any single one of us could mess up and it could be pretty expensive. Uh, we have to realize that we're all on the same team that we're working together. And if we respect one another, if we trust one another, if we're focused on those win-win relationships, if we're focused on the long game, that bump in the road today will just be something we laugh about five years from now. Uh, and finally, have fun. And, and I think that, you know, that last thing that I said, keeping the perspective, staying humble, helps people have fun, helps people realize like, hey, we're in an industry where we get paid to build awesome stuff, transform spaces for people, transform their lives by working with our hands, by working with cool machines, by creating, by, by bringing engineering and, and architecture together, by bringing science and art together and really creating something awesome. So how can you not have fun doing that? And again, it's keeping that perspective uh, that, that allows you to do that. And as the leader uh, in your company, and, and, and to be a leader, by the way, you don't need to have a, a C stitched on your jersey. You don't need to be the owner to be a leader. Uh, everyone can be a leader. By demonstrating these values, what Matt is doing is creating a team of leaders. And that is what allows him to delegate. And that is what allows him, He later on he talks about it in the episode, how uh, he's, he's really wanted to be able to get his company to the point where he can manage by walking around. Because that is his, his, his own personality. That is who he is. He doesn't want to be in the details on everything. He doesn't want to be the super structured guy. So he found people that have those skills, brings them together, gives them clear roles and responsibilities, gives them the latitude to take ownership and take responsibility for those things, and gives them a roadmap, which is these 12 core values, so that, like he said, when they're faced with a decision that they need to make, it's pretty easy. I have a couple options in front of me. Which one matches the core values of my company the most? That's probably the direction that we should go in. And when you do that, you have the ability to empower your team. And when you've empowered your team, you can focus on the bigger issues, you can focus on the bigger long-term vision, and you can take your company to the next level. So I just, I just thought that, uh, these two episodes in particular, these two gentlemen, Jordan and Matt, uh, they are doing phenomenal things with their businesses. And to come on the show and to share that with us, uh, they're doing phenomenal things for the industry too. So uh, I know I thank them each individually. I'll thank them again right now. Thanks, guys, because uh, what you're doing and how you're sharing this information is really uh, helpful to everyone in this industry. And, and anyone really who stumbles across this podcast, whether you're in the hardscape industry or not, even though the hardscape industry is the best industry, you will not convince me otherwise. Um, I guess that's it for this episode. We're in the month of June now, so uh, I know that everyone is crazy busy. It is peak hardscape season across North America. So I'm trying to keep these episodes a little bit shorter so you can just get through them. Um, like I said last week, if you have questions, if you have topics, if you have ideas for guests, if you want to be a guest on the show, uh, drop us a line at podcast at hardscaper.com or send us a DM uh, at hardscaper on Instagram. That's hardscaper with an underscore at the end. And uh, it'll be our pleasure to uh, get back to you and, uh, and talk about how we could get you on the show or cover your topic on the show. Um, and I guess that is it for this one, folks. So thank you very much. Uh, we have hit a few thousand listeners in just the first 20 episodes in just a few months. It is incredible. The response that we've gotten from, uh, from this audience. Um, I'm truly hum humbled and, and honored to, uh, to have this opportunity. And, uh, it's because of your support that we're uh, able to keep doing this. So thank you very much. 
work hard, pave harder, and we'll see you next week.